Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to be continuing on with this team that you can see on your screen in front of you right now, which is Ray Olga team. As always, the team is down in the description below. There's a roll paste and a poker paste if you'd like to try it out, test it out. And if you do, let me know in the comment section how you're getting on with it, what you like about the team, what you don't like about the team, and what you've maybe changed up about it to suit your own playing style. So, uh, we'll just kick straight into it today. We are 6-0 at the minute. I'll hop over to the right screen and uh, we'll get some music on and uh, as always if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to drop a like on the video do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and uh, as always leave your comments down in the comment section below we'll go with Necrozma version 1 as the track to kick us off today Tim's been doing really well so far this week and like I keep saying we are quite low ladder at the minute but regardless of that the team feels nice it's flowing nice we haven't seen too much of the requires I feel like the the restricted kind of that's been putting in all the work this week so far is the Kyogre which is kind of obvious a bit surprising that we've not been really utilizing the Rayquaza as much um, maybe because of the band um, I feel a lot more comfortable with the sash always uh, but the band gives you that just just that much more damage output and it is very very it's kind of surprising as well especially in a best of one format um, even in a best of three you can utilize it pretty well um, but yeah, there's options I think to maybe look at changing up that restricted option there alongside the Kyogre and obviously we've seen how well James Beck did with the, the reindeer combination, the Xerneas and uh, the Kyogre in his build which you could easily change this team into. Um, you maybe want to look at adding in something like Amoongus if you were to do that but uh, it's very flexible and I think this sort of build is, uh, it, it covers most things in the format right now and uh, does quite well. So it's a good starting team I'd say for those of you that are getting back into Pokemon at the minute and uh, want to look at kickstarting into the season now it's going to take a little bit longer to find opponents for some reason today is not the day to be looking for opponents so what i'll do i'll cut it right now and we'll come back when we find our first opponent of the episode we've got phase as our first opponent of the episode from australia sunny old australia so we'll get straight into it um would you believe it talking about that reindeer core exactly what we bump into it's fate so we got Xerneas, Kangaskhan, Incineroar, Kyogre, Stack Attacker and Tornadus we've got options of speed control here straight away identifying those we've got the Stack Attacker with the Trick Room can help support Incineroar and Kyogre and possibly Kangaskhan also a good deterrent against opposing Xerneas and then you've got uh, the speed control on the opposite end of the spectrum with the Tornadus offering Tailwind there uh, a bit undeniable Tailwind as well, uh, supporting again pretty much the majority of the team. The big thing that we need to watch out for is that Xerneas for sure, uh, and trying to stop it setting up um, going forward. The Kangaskhan obviously offers uh, fake out support and is the mega of the team, so something else we need to watch out for there. Right, what do we want to do, man? Um, I feel like Cartana in this match could be extremely good. Outside of the Tornadus, it hits everything for really good damage, so it's definitely something I want to bring here. Uh, Tornadus could be very good for us, uh, just for speed control, shutting things down. Um, yeah, I'm going to bring Cartana, Tornadus as lead. I think we want to bring our own Kyogre, and what else do we want? Do we want our own Rayquaza? Ray could be really good here, actually. Um, even though Incineroar of our own could be extremely useful. I'm gonna gonna up the rate um, just because I feel like we can probably do enough throughout the game to put things in extreme speed range to try and bring rain late game and sweep up. Hopefully that's the that's the plan but we'll see what happens so um, I think this is the highest rate player we've played this week. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, we're gonna see Kangaskhan and Xerneas come out for my opponent which is fine. Uh, Kangaskhan can only pick one thing out, and uh, it's likely going to be the Tornadus, potentially. Um, so I'm just going to go for the Tailwind, and I'm going to go for a Smart. Tailwind and Smart Strike? Yeah, Tailwind, Smart Strike. Um, Xerneas switching out, which is fine. Uh, Incineroar coming in, yeah, that's fine as well. Let's say we get faked out into Tornadus here. Maybe the Cartana, I don't know. 
Maybe it's just attacking to Cartana. Who knows? Who knows? But getting the tailwind up is going to be quite important for us. Um, especially with Cartana on the field and especially if we've got a switch into Kyogre this next turn to protect our Cartana. But we do have the fake out to contend with. There's a smart strike. Kangaskhan just gone straight up for an attack here. Um, and double edge coming out. This will be into Tornadus. Yeah. But that's fine because this will just proc a tasty, tasty berry. Uh, which is super fine. You don't mind that at all. Um... I'm just going to take a lot of damage there as well. I think what we'll do is we will switch in. We switch in Rayquaza at this point, or switching Kyogre. It's just I feel like Tornadus takes another another bunch of damage here. Um, Cartana probably gets faked out. I'm going to switch in Kyogre, and I'm going to go for a smart uh, Sacred Sword into the Kangaskhan. I'd like to keep Tornadus, if I can, for when that Xerneas crops back up again. And we've got that priority taunt to shut down the Geomancy. That would be ideal. But we get the Kyogre onto the field. It's obviously protecting the Cartana from a potential flare blitz coming out. Now, Kyogre probably will take uh, a double edge here, but... Um, we're still going to be in a decent position next turn, if that is the worst. So Kangaskhan switching out, actually. Okay. Going to see Xerneas come back onto the field. I wonder if the, the Incineroar goes for the Flare Blitz here. That'd be interesting. It might U turn. Uh, we are going to see Sacred Sword into the Xerneas not really do that much damage in U turn. Yeah, that makes sense because now. Huh. Yeah, now the Kangaskhan comes back onto the field. But if you don't fake out the Kyogre, you take a pretty strong Water Spout attack. Um. But I think my opponent probably wants to stall out the Tailwind. They're doing a pretty good job of it as well. Um, what are we going to do? We could bring in Ray, but it's just going to weaken out. I'm going to Smart Strike into the Xerneas. I'm chasing the Xerneas all the time. The, the, the smart thing here probably is to Sacred Sword the Kangaskhan. Although, the Fake Out, like I said, can only really come out onto one, one of our... Our Pokemon. So if that Xerneas does stay in and they fake out the Kyogre, then we do get a Smart Strike. It is going to be intimidated, so we're not going to be doing as much damage. But it makes more sense, yeah, to uh, stall out these these Tailwind turns. So kind of baiting us out with them. Um, I'm going to see the, the fake out into the Kyogre here for sure. Yep. Yeah, and this is what I mean about the Sacred Sword into the the Kang here. It would have been made more sense, I think. Um, but we're still in a decent position this next turn. Cortana is uh, double intimidated. Now, with our last turn of Tailwind up, I think... Should I just Leaf Blade? Sacred Sword, I think. Sacred Sword and Scald, the Kangaskhan, that should be enough to get it. Um, I'm not really... Yeah. Okay. Sacred Sword. Crit. 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 It's not going to be a crit. No. Okay. And double edge. Do we take this? I don't know if we do. Oh, it's into the Cortana. Maybe thinking that we would switch there. Tailwind is going to pitter out for us now, though. Um, but we still have to beat the Kangaskhan. Uh, so we still got the opportunity to put a lot of pressure on here with a Scald into the Incineroar um, and a Sacred Sword into that Kang. The question is, though, whether the Kangaskhan switches out into, um, into Xerneas. Because I don't think... Um, <sighs> the one thing we could potentially do is scald into that slot and sacred sword into it as well we kind of cover bases there if it does switch out into Xerneas at least we get some nice damage okay Incineroar switching out and Kyogre coming in so I'm likely going to get a scald into the opposing Kyogre we could pick up a burn there, which would be nice. And this should pick up the knockout. And give us a beast boost as well uh, onto our Cortana and get rid of one of those Intimidate drops as well. Minus two at the minute, which isn't ideal. Um, and we'll get a Scald into the Kyogre. At least we know my opponent's four Pokemon. The worrying thing now is that we probably see the Xerneas come onto the field. We do pick up the burn as well onto the Kyogre. 
and the Xerneas probably comes in. We've not really got anything to get around. Uh, the Geomancy setup, which is a little bit awkward for us, because what have we got in the back? I mean, we got we've got Ray. Okay, one of our options definitely could be doubling into Xerneas here. Um, the problem doing that is, I feel like. If you Kyogre, you potentially switch out into Incineroar. We still don't really get any further down. <sighs> we just double into Xerneas here. Because I, I kind of prefer to get it in extreme speed range. If it does stay in. I'm going to just double into it. Knowing that we've got Ray in the back. Yeah, there's the Incineroar coming in. And that's why we could have scalded that slot. We could have done. It's no good saying it because we haven't done that. But, I mean, as long as the Xerneas goes for the Geomancy here, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, so there's a Smart Strike. Maybe minus two dot. Um, and then the Geomancy coming out. Yeah. And the Scald, if we get the burn, you know, this kind of clinches the game for us. I think if we get the Scald burn here, I think we'll be able to close this one up pretty easily. Um, because the burn chip will put that Xerneas 100% in range for Rayquaza coming in. And what we need to try and do is just time it right so that the Incineroar hasn't got an active fake out when it comes onto the field. So we do get the Scald into the, the Xerneas. I'm doing a nice bit of damage. No burn though, but it's still in extreme speed range. So that's not the end of the world. Oh, uh, what do we do here though? Because we've got to make a decision to probably sack something. Um... We could potentially protect. I think I'd like to keep Kyogre around for the Incineroar in particular. Uh, and I definitely want to. I'm going to sack Tornadus out of everything they've got. Um, normally, if I wouldn't have the Rayquaza in the back, I would probably say, let's sack the Ray slot, if you get what I mean. Because then we've got the speed control with the Tornadus. We can bring it in, get the speed control up, and then hopefully have enough in the tank from there to uh, with Cortana to close things out but with the extreme speed from Ray I think it changes the dynamics of the game we're gonna see Incineroar switch out we're gonna see Kyogre come back out onto the field now we're kind of hoping here the Tornadus goes down if it doesn't it's not the end of the world because then we still got Tailwind we can take advantage of there's Moonblast yeah it's into Tornadus so into that Cortana slot which now opens the door for Ray to come in and even an intimidated extreme speed um, is going to be enough and one of the things we can really play on here is um, the Incineroar coming back in on that Kyogre slot which you've got to imagine what my opponent will probably try and do switch out their Kyogre get the Incineroar onto the field with the Intimidate and then the, then have the, uh, the fake out the next turn to stop the Ray being able to extreme speed um, but what I'm going to do is scold into that slot um, Mega Evolve and extreme speed because if the Incineroar does come in on that Kyogre slot now, Scald should be able to pick up the knockout. We're not going to see a switch out though. I wonder if we're just going to see the Kyogre go for an Ice Beam. Potentially could. Ooh, let's see. Yeah, there's a Protect. I'm going to see an Ice Beam from the Kyogre, I think. Which is a nice alternative play for sure. But then it does leave you a bit more open the next turn. Because uh, an Ice Beam is not going to take our Ray down. Yeah. Unfortunately, it won't take us down. Ooh, it's very close. Though. You can go for the Double Protect here. That would clinch you the game. Um, 100%. What I might do is switch into... No, I'm not going to switch into Cortana. I do expect the Incineroar to come in now. Uh, because the extreme speed just picks up the, the Xerneas. Like, you have to go for the double protect. You have to. The other option for us would be doubling into the Kyogre, but that's extremely risky. We, we leave the Xerneas completely open to just pick up double knockout here, and then Cortana's left. Helpless in the back to come in, and we will lose this game, I think, uh, over commentating. It's a risk we don't really need to take, and this is a pretty safe play for us here, so... Goes for the double, doesn't get it, thankfully. Um, and that should be us in a nice position to close this game up. 
Uh, we will go down to an ice beam here, but we've got Cortana now to come in, um, get rid of the Kyogre uh, from my opponent's side of the field, and then our Kyogre will be able to get rid of the Incineroar uh, on my opponent's side. So we should be able to close this one up. It was all important. Like that double protect there would have probably won my opponent the game. Uh, and my opponent made the, the really smart decision there to make those plays and, and make that bold position possible, potentially possible for them to close this one up. And I think you've got to do that. But uh, we were fortunate that the double protect didn't happen. And um, yeah, we'll just protect the turn and um, go around the fake out because that's a big thing for us. And then probably double into... Um, Double into the, uh, the Incineroar the next turn. Or do we? Do we? Yeah, we do. <laughs> we definitely double into it. I think the burn changes things on the Kyogre where we should be able to one on one the opposing Kyogre. I think we're probably going to see uh, Fake Out and um, probably an Ice Beam into our Cartana here. <clears throat> yeah. And then this next turn we'll probably see the Kyogre protect. Uh, the Incineroar try and get the Flare Blitz into our Cartana um, and we will just go for the, the Scald and the Sacred Sword into the Incineroar and that, that combination should be enough to get the Incineroar even around a berry. There's the Protect, yeah, so. Um, Sacred Sword, what are we doing? Procna Berry? Not even, so. Oh. Ah, got like hair in my mouth. Where's that come from? That works out even better for us, not Procna Berry. Picking up the knockout onto the Incineroar there. And uh, making sure that we do get the, the KO. And now puts us in a nice position to just Leaf Blade. Cartana putting in a lot of work in this match. Um, and pick up the victory here. Um, and I think, yeah. Pretty happy with how we played this one. Very good game to phase. And a uh, nice one for us to kick off with today. So that's really good. Match is forfeit. And uh, yeah. Continuing on in style. So yeah, very nice game for us to start with today. So I'll hop over to the screen, see where our rating is at the minute. We should be creeping up upwards towards the 1600s, which isn't too bad for us. And I think 7-0 this week, so it's not too bad um, to kick us off with this team. And I do really like this team. This team I probably will take to uh, a Premier Challenge or an MSS even um, in the coming weeks, I think. It's something that I feel like super comfortable with. And even though you, you kind of know the ins and outs of it, it's one of those teams where I think you can kind of find a way around most teams with the, the options that you've got there, especially with the Tornadoes. I think it does open the door up. And I do... It's weird. I play Tornadoes very early Ultra Series. And um, I, I kind of said like then it was like it would be still a very useful tech that we've seen how useful it was in sun and moon series um but it kind of dropped off early ultra series and it's nice to see it kind of come back um late ultra series especially doing well at worlds because it is a very good pokemon and uh, it was right before worlds where it started to pick up all of that like popularity again and i imagine it'll probably continue as we go into the ultra series into the back end of the ultra series as long as you've got an opposing terrain control to get around potentially psychic terrain it's it's still really really powerful and that kind of undeniable tailwind uh is just so useful with a lack of Trick Room teams as well in this format, we've not seen too many of them, and uh, Hard Trick Room is just not a thing that we're seeing at all. I think the Tailwind is a bit more of a viable option uh, for most teams to rely on. So we'll look for our next opponent, as it has been. This the standard taking ages to find any opponents um, recently. I'll cut this now. We'll come back when we find our next opponent of the episode. And we've got our next opponent, so let's hop straight into team preview. Alright, our next opponent is playing a team of Kyogre, Ibeltal, Tapu Lele, Gengar, Stack Attacker, and Incineroar. Now this is a team that did really well in the early portion of the Ultra Series and then fell off a cliff and we never really saw too much of it since then. The odd, odd appearance here and there, but this is a team that I feel does really well at the moment. Uh, consisting normally of Tapu Lele being scarfed, Mega Gengar to trap everything in. Then you've got the Trick Room element with the Stack Attacker uh, alongside that Kyogre and potentially sometimes Assault Vest on Ibeltal. Veltal, but sometimes there's a move there uh, with Tailwind support, so you've got dual speed control options on the team. Very good team, solid team, and uh, something it's going to be difficult to get around. So I think 
Tonatus, Tapacoco. Good options for us. I think I need uh, Incineroar in this match. Or do I? Do I? Do I? Or do I bring Rayquaza? Rayquaza. Hmm. Hmm. Or could we potentially eat Kyogre? I just worry about. Well. I don't know if you're going to go with Tapu Lele to begin with, really, anyway. Because um, we could go Tapu Koko. Tornadus. And I think I'm bringing Rayquaza instead of Incineroar. Yeah. Hmm. It's a tricky team. Always a tricky team. I think it's one of the better built teams in the format. Probably doesn't get as much credit as it deserves. Um, I think it's a really, really strong strong variant, probably one of the strongest that we've seen in the Ultra series, um, and one I'd probably like to see a little bit more of, I always find it very tricky playing against it because of just the dynamics of the team and how versatile it is. We're going to see uh, Tapa de Coco and Kyogre come out for us, and Ivelto and Incineroar come out for my opponent, so don't mind this too much. Uh, my opponent has got a free, pretty much kind of fake out and attack into Kyogre if they want here um, we could double protect but it would give my opponent the opportunity to set up their own tailwind um, which is not really what we want to be doing um, there's definitely they're definitely going to fake out into the core core. They, I think they have to um, what options we've got in the back I don't really want to switch anything in so I think protecting core core here uh, Kyogre is, is the, the best option for us um, and going for a thunder into Veltal although it's probably just better do they go Tailwind though? that's the thing I think he probably goes a move this first turn although probably not because you, I'm going to go Water Spout and I'm going to go Thunder I'm just going to double attack try and get this Veltal if we see Z move it's going to make this match way harder for us we don't actually see any fake out which is Pretty nice for us. So if we do see, wow, we get the Velto. <laughs> this is gonna be a quick one, okay? Uh, which isn't the worst thing in the world. Um, yeah, my opponent predicting that we probably uh, not attack with Kyogre, but um, this is the thing I always come back to. Like, if you've got the option to fake out the big threat on your opponent's side of the field and you don't do it, uh, and did, you can't blame anyone else but yourself because you give your opponent the opportunity to take down those Pokemon for you and you got punished for them making the, the straightforward play and people will say well it was just a, it was just the most obvious play to make but yeah it's the most obvious play you, you could have got around that you could have faked out the, the Coco and if you got the Z move on your Revelto then you could have went for that like and that's a safe play so you know there is that argument there um, and always something to come back on you never really want to put yourself at a deficit at this early stage of the match because it gets so difficult from here on out um, now we do see uh, the Tapu Lele and the Kyogre come in for my opponent um, really what we can try and do is is concentrate down on the, the, the Tapu Lele I think at this point as well we can probably sacrifice Tornadus by getting it in on the field so we can get Tapu Koko back in but we're just going to see the forfeit so that's what I mean like you lose so much resource at the start of the match it's near impossible for you to come back out and that is the decision making that is so key you know you think okay well if I make this decision it's a little bit risky uh, you've got to think what's the worst case scenario in that situation is it all going to go tits up is it all going to go wrong if if this doesn't go the way i want it to and if it comes back to that answer and you think yeah if if my opponent does this and that and i don't prevent it and i lose both my pokemon here i've lost the game then that is the wrong answer for you to really do especially in an early stage in a match like that so um, we've had really one really good game and one good example of not um, giving your opponent too much room early on. So we'll end it there, my friends. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. We have kept up with this flawless uh, run at the minute. So hopefully we can end up the week 
10-0. Imagine that. So we'll see if we can do that tomorrow. As always, do leave a like on the video, leave your comments, and do subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all for the next episode tomorrow. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.